Welcome to Midwest Whitetail. Today is September 1st and I'm back in eastern Nebraska hunting my home farm. And I'm real excited. I've got a few days to hunt here. Hopefully I can get it done. And first up we're going to join Aaron in Missouri. And he's got a seven-year-old buck that showed up on his farm. It's a deer that he's got a bunch of history with. So we'll join Aaron as he puts together a strategy to hunt this legend of the farm. Midwest Whitetail is brought to you by Realtree, Hoyt Archery, Fuse Accessories, Muddy Outdoors, Frigid Forage, Trophy Rock, Scentmaster, Cabela's, Rocket Broadheads, Bloodsport Arrows, Redneck Hunting Blinds, Scott Archery, Woods Zero Turn Mowers, Scentlock, Deer Grow, Quiet Cat, Execute Scent Control, Non-Typical Wildlife Solutions, Yeti Coolers, and Nikon. down here in Missouri today on my family farm that I grew up hunting and this is a spot that we've got a lot of history with over the last few years. We've put in a food plot here every year for as long as I can remember and I've been able to harvest a few nice bucks off of it but the September 15th opener is just around the corner and we've been running trail camera over my trophy rock lick which is farther down this gap behind me and there's a very old buck on there that we've got a ton of history with. I haven't seen him in four years. I actually missed him on film in 2009, I believe it was. And uh, it's kind of interesting because the first pictures I got of this deer were in 2009, and that was back when I was still running 35 millimeter film trail cameras. So I was having to go to Walgreens to get the film developed. So I guess for the time being, we'll call this buck the Walgreens buck. I think he's seven and a half years old. We just snuck back there, pulled the card on the camera. And if he's on here, we've got several things we're gonna do today to try to hopefully set up to kill this buck during the early season but needless to say I'm anxious to put this card in here and see if that buck's still showing up. Well I looked through all those trail camera pictures over the last five days and I didn't see that buck on there but that still doesn't dampen my spirits. I know he's in here. Um, like I said a lot of history with this deer. I, I believe I know where he's living at so that should help us put together a strategy for this buck but right now I'm standing in the main part of my food plot and I've got a little pear tree in the middle of it that we've left here for quite some time and it's bearing quite a few pears this year so they should be falling within the next couple weeks that's something that you definitely need to concentrate on during the early part of the season that September 15th opener you're looking not only for acorns and green browse but you're looking for these fruit trees like a pear tree or a persimmon tree or something like that we've got one of those farther down in the field that the deer love to hit also. This pear tree is only about 30 yards from my stand that I shot a doe out of last year and I think this Walgreens buck is coming off of my neighbors over here to the south and as you can see in the footage that the day that I missed him back in 2009 him and another buck came from the south and worked their way up that corridor that I at the time had planted in winter wheat. Right now there's nothing planted back there so we're going to get on the tractor and we're going to put autumn quick plot back up through that gap supposed to rain this evening so that should give it a good start and then I may put a trail camera down there as well so we're gonna jump on the tractor real quick and get this done before the rain hits. Here he is blowing up on the computer. We just made it back to the house and barely missed that rainstorm that just blew through. I actually have all of the old 35 millimeter pictures of this buck laid out here on the computer. It's kind of cool. That's the same exact trophy rock lick that he's on this year. Here in Missouri, we're usually targeting three or four year old age class bucks because it's just very difficult to get a buck much older than that on a small property like ours. We get along great with all of our neighbors, but we only have about 150 acres here and our place gets rifle hunted by other people and all the surrounding properties do as well with that rifle season in the middle of the rut. A lot of three and four year old bucks are killed each year, which there's nothing wrong with that. That's how Missouri works. 
but there is a contrast in what we might be doing in Iowa or Illinois and Kansas hunting five and six year old bucks or targeting that age class of deer because around here we usually don't get them to that age but that's why this deer is so special is because he's we know he's seven and a half years old now and it's definitely the oldest buck that I've ever seen on this farm. He's showing up in daylight right now hopefully that trend continues we just put out another trail camera on the south end of the food plot where he's coming from in these pictures. As you can see his rump is pointing to the south where we just dissed up and put in that autumn quick plot. We put a Cabela's trail camera down there over a small opening, the same exact opening that he walked through back in 2009 the evening that I missed him. So the season comes in on September 15th. We've got about two and a half weeks before that happens. So I'm going to be monitoring these cameras really close. I may even go up there and hang a set towards the south end of that food plot because I think that's where he likes to bed. As they start to get older, as we talk about on here all the time, they begin to shrink their home range a little bit, and I'm hoping that's what this guy has done. So I move that one camera towards the south end of this food plot. Hopefully we start picking him up, and then we'll make some strategic decisions as we get closer towards opening day here in Missouri. Welcome to Midwest Whitetail. I want to talk about the Quiet Cat in today's segment. This is one of our new sponsors for 2014, and these things are a lot of fun to ride. For us, it makes the most sense for checking trail cameras, uh, refreshing mineral sites, going to and from some tree stands. Uh, there's certain situations where it's going to come in real handy. It's an electric uh, three-wheel vehicle that runs off the front tire, uh, so you get pretty good traction because you can keep your weight forward and you can make it up some pretty good hills and you can stay you know, on, on a pretty good clip going on flat ground. Uh, but what's cool about this is the fact that you can put it in the back of your truck. Uh, you can drop the handlebar. I can fold that right down. I can put this thing even in my topper in the back of the truck. When I get to where I'm going, I can pop it out, uh, jump on it and go. When I'm done, put it right back in again. And uh, fairly lightweight, but there's a system uh, for putting it in and out of the truck that makes it pretty easy. Uh, you don't have to be athletic to do it. You don't even have to be really strong to do it. Okay, now I'm going to show you how this thing works. The, uh, there's two ways you can ride this. You can either remove the stops from the back end. So now you can more carve your turns. You can turn a little bit sharper with it. Or you can keep the stops in and you can make the back end of it rigid so it rides more like a traditional tricycle. It just kind of depends upon the terrain where you're going to be riding it on and maybe your own comfort with uh, you know, the balance of the machine. The whole key, and I'll show you here in a second, but the whole key is which foot you've got your weight on. If you want to turn left, you put your weight on your left foot. If you want to turn right, you put your weight on your right foot. Uh, so let me rip around here a little bit and uh, hopefully I don't crash. I can show you how this thing works. So now I'm going to take a left turn. So I just slow down, lean to my left, put my weight on my left foot, comes right around. I mean, it's super easy to turn sharp. You just have to use your balance a little bit. I'll make the right turn up here. So I just got my weight on my right foot when I'm making the turn. And that's the key to it. Uh, like I said, it's a little bit trickier to make sharp turns when you lock the back end because you don't have that ability to, to carve and, and really to articulate the corners. But I mean, we have to have fun just sitting around the yard and this thing. I'll ride back and forth to the house at lunchtime from my office and go through the mailbox and get the mail. And, I've even used it to uh, time our daughter when she's doing her track workouts. It's got a nice little speedometer on here. I can sit on here to sip in my cool water while she's running and yelling out the, the uh, speeds that she's going at. Uh, so there's a lot of cool things you can do with it, it's just fun. But obviously for us it has to do with uh, what is practical for us in the field and that's the ability to get to and from tree stands uh, without making any noise and without leaving any scent. Anyway, this is what I wanted to talk about and introduce you to a new sponsor, Quiet Cat, because I'm sure this is a product you'll see us using quite a bit this fall. One more new sponsor for 2014 I want to talk about quick is Deer Grow. The company makes two products right now, Plot Boost and Plot Start, and these are our liquid uh, soil enhancers. Uh, one is really is, is a substitute for using traditional ag lime 
and that's an exciting product for us as food plot farmers because it's really tough to get a big truck and a, and a somebody that's committed to coming in and spreading the lime on a half acre or a quarter acre food plot. Uh, you're stuck doing a lot of that by hand, and you know it's not. There's no convenient way to uh, raise the pH on a small plot like the stuff that we deal with. Whereas this is liquid, uh, it's really easy to put it in a sprayer. You can even do it with a hand sprayer, and you can bring your pH levels up in small food plots. The other one is Plot Boost, and this is one that deals with the biology of the soil. And uh, rather than me trying to dig into that, I'm just going to send you to the Deer Grow website. There's a lot more information there, and I'm sure you can pick up some of the technical and scientific details. But the point is, it makes the macro ingredients, which is your traditional fertilizers, your N, P, and K, more accessible to the plant by working with the micronutrients and by working with the biology of the soil itself. Uh, there's a lot of science behind it. There's a lot of proven field research. Uh, just some cool products for the food plot farmer. And we're excited to be working with Deer Grow this year. It's the morning of September 2nd. I'm going to have to make this short and sweet. Because as you can see, the little bug that we just had come by. The deer come out of nowhere. And this is just kind of a transition area. There's a beaten trail about 10 yards right down below us. So we'll see what happens. Probably going to be our best chance. It's about the best weather we're going to get for this trip. It's supposed to get really warm and windy after this. <sighs> Got a toe down. It sounded like when I shot, the arrow hit something. It hit her a little bit back. But either way, she ran about 10 yards. And then I said, it was able to put another shot in her. She's right down. Well, we just recovered the doe that I shot this morning. And then this evening, we're going to try something a little bit different. And we're going to go after a couple of bucks that my dad saw last night, uh, way out in the middle of a bean field. These deer actually came out of the corn and fed along the edge of the beans. One of the challenges of hunting this 80 acre property is that most of it's comprised of agricultural fields. There's not a lot of wooded habitat and the areas that are wooded are relatively small so they're hard areas to get into and hunt effectively. More often than not when we see a mature buck whether it's during summer scouting or early in the season they're coming out of the corn out of the middle of the cornfield and feeding out in the beans. A good example of this was two years ago when I hunted here um, the corn was coming out on September 18th so as we watched the farmer harvesting the corn you know he kicked out no less than six deer that evening so that kind of confirmed my suspicion that when we're struggling to see deer early in the season when the corn is still standing, those deer are probably spending a lot of time bedding in there. So after talking with my dad and figuring out where these bucks came out of the corn, out into the beans, we decided to change things up a little bit and go in and try to ambush these bucks where they'd come out the night before. Well, Zach and I just got set up, but now we're in position close to where my dad saw those bucks come out last night. And what he saw last night was these deer that came out of the corn. They just kind of worked their way north a little bit. They stayed within about 20 yards of the edge of the corn the entire time. If they happened to do that again, that would put them within, you know, pretty easy bow range if they worked through the same area. You know, I've done this a lot back when I did deer research and had to dart deer, dart box especially, to put radio collars on them. I used this tactic a lot, just hiding a few rows in the corn and ambushing deer as they you know, feed out along the edge of the beans. Hopefully we can pull it off with the bow tonight. It's always fun to try something different, and uh, you never know. If they do the same things they did last night, we may be on the money. Overall, it was a good trip. You know, it was exciting to get back out in the field with a bow in the hand. I was able to put a little meat in the freezer, 
One thing I've been encouraged by this summer is the number of deer that we've been seeing either in the field or on the trail cameras. You know, in 2012, this area was hit really hard by EHD. Seems like the numbers of deer are bouncing back. So hopefully I'll be able to come back next week. The weather's supposed to be cooler and hopefully get a shot at putting an early season buck down here in Nebraska. Thanks for joining me today on Midwest Whitetail. Uh, we'll be back again next week. And I think our theme is gonna be focused on uh, uh, the patterning process. I'm gonna really get rolling now with the trail cameras out in the field. This is the time of year when I really try to make hay on finding the bucks that I'll be hunting, figuring out what's here, uh, and trying to put a pattern together on some of these bucks. Uh, so you can tag right along as we get this whole process started. Well, I've gotta go whip some more cookies here in the driveway. I'll see you right back here again next week for the next episode of Midwest Whitetail. And remember to always dream big. Burnout.